All right, welcome everyone. So today, Dr. Paul Easterling, Dr. E, is in the house and he is gonna lead a discussion on African uh, religion, uh, values and philosophy. Next week, uh, we're going to uh, hear from uh, Professor uh, Chigozi Obioma. How many of you know Professor Chigozi Obioma? How many of you have heard of him? He's uh, one of the um, top writers in the world. He's been, um, 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 anyway, I'll send you, send you information about, on, on him. Um, he will be doing the session on African literature and how we can use that. And then we're going to close with uh, uh, Professor uh, Jose Pamienta Bay. So that's, that's the lineup. Uh, Dr. E, I see, I see you nodding your head. You know Professor Jose Pamienta Bay? Yes? Oh, yeah. I, I, studied, um, I studied the Moors for my dissertation. And um, he's uh, one of the leading voices on the Moors because he, he's a Moor. He's a Moorish American. Um, and I studied them for my dissertation, so I had to work through him. And I, his book was a big part of my uh, research. So yeah, man, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you are in for a treat. You are in for an amazing, amazing treat. Like Professor uh, uh, Dr. E just said, I mean, we have lined up some amazing scholars and. Um, uh, mounting movers for this uh, program. I mean, you all heard Professor Mamo Muche last week. Uh, how many of you enjoy that? Uh, Professor Muche is in the house. How many of you enjoyed enjoyed him? It was it was just really amazing. And like I said again, for those who who, who are just joining today, we're going to be blessed uh, by uh, you know uh, discussing uh, with uh, Dr. Paul Easterling on African religions, values, and philosophy. Next week, Professor Chigozi Obioma. Look him up. Chigozi um, he's one of the African uh, giants when it comes to literature. Uh, he's going to uh, bless this pl platform and, and engage with, with us. One of the, in fact, I, can, I think he was uh, uh, called one of the top 100 uh, global thinkers. Um, so we, you know, we are happy to, come to, to have him. And then we'll close with uh, Professor uh, Jose Pamienta Bay. Without further ado, welcome to you, everybody. Welcome, everybody. We're gonna have fun today. Dr. E is in the house, Dr. E, all the way from the East Coast. Please take it away. All right. Um, <clears throat> I just, I'm going to uh, be reading my presentation. Um, if there are any a point where we can stop. I made some points uh, in the presentation to stop and allow for questions. Um, if there are uh, any questions in between those points, just let me know. We can stop and, and discuss and uh, we can go uh, from there. All right. So my presentation is focused uh, mainly on uh, the ability of African cultures to survive within a hostile environment, particularly the religious philosophies and values and belief systems. Um, the processes and methods of a culture's ability to survive in a hostile environment is the essence of an African-centered analysis. Remember Arni in the article, Implications of African-American Spirituality, proclaims, I shall maintain that Africa survived the Middle Passage, the slave experience and, all, and other trials in America because of the depth and strength of Af African spirituality and humanism. The spirituality allowed the survival of African-Americans as a distinctive cultural en entity in New Europe which is what she was referring to as the United States, New York, New Europe. This sentiment is in stark contrast to the belief that Africans were tabula rasa, a blank slate, when encountered by Europeans and therefore needed to be taught culture and were in effect not quite human. However, since Africans were forcibly brought to the shores of the Americas, it's clear they had a firm grip and keen understanding of their culture and the power of their spiritual belief through the phenomenon known as conjure. The word conjure is not limited to any particular religious belief. Instead, conjure has been known to encompass everything from the practice of voodoo to spiritual churches and includes innocuous day-to-day -day individual efforts to control and manipulate the immediate environment. Please, how do you spell that? 
Conjun. Conjun. C O N C O N G J U R E. C O N J U R E. Conjo. And you said conjo yeah. conjo means what? Uh the way to bring something bring something in. The way oh, to, to conjo. Uh, yeah, to conjo. Okay. Conjo. okay. Yeah. Uh Theophis Smith argues that conjure is a metaphor for the quote ritual, figural, and therapeutic transformations of culture, unquote. Or more simply, conjure is a method of communication using symbols and symbolic phenomena to interpret understand and shape the physical and spiritual world. Further, conjure can be employed as a pharmacopoeia agent, as well as a mode of prophecy to help predict and control future events. In other words, conjure is an African-American or African method of spiritual agency. Popular understandings of culture focus almost exclusively on the practice of voodoo in New Orleans and or Haiti. However, conjure as a spiritual system encompasses much more than a folksy superstition that can be traced to a variety of belief systems indigenous to the African continent. Moreover, it is a belief system that is practiced in, a, in, in the home where people, particularly women, use specific items, animal bones, human hair, bottles, crucifixes, and certain metals combined with distinctive words and gestures for a desired response or outcome. These responses or outcomes are not always as grandiose as prophecy. Many times it may include something as trivial, trivial as regrowing hair for balding men, being able to uh, get a, the attention of a loved one or a, a love interest, or some extra luck at the local gambling establishment. The point of conjure, therefore, is to make the spiritual world work for you to form a symbolic bond to the unseen world. All right. Any questions so far? I would say I would suggest we take a, a pause right here. Again, this is a, a nurturing environment. This is a safe environment, um, and and whatever we are discussing here, we are discussing it uh, to support each other. I would like for us to segue away from that reading and go around and have everyone maybe share their unique experiences with spirituality. How do you practice your own spirituality today? And everything is welcome. And that is the African way. When I tell you everything is welcome, I mean it because the Africans don't, we don't judge people. And African religion does not seek to convert people. That is not what it does. I mean, and you will get to hear more of this with the, Dr. E. Just want to appreciate you from where you are. So, what do you do with your spirituality? We want to learn from you, in a, in essence. Um, I hope I hope uh, you all can be uh, comfortable to to share with us uh, as far as you know how you practice today. Let me let's go to uh, my brother Maurice. Are you able to to chime in? The fears. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, please. Do you mind sharing with us how you currently do your uh, spiritual practice okay so in the mornings i take a little time to um just kind of reflect so you start your day with a reflection um gr gratefulness you know so not just reflecting on what went right or what went wrong being grateful waking up uh just kind of clearing the mind preparing for the day um that and i when i start that i have a little altar space that i, I utilize for that um and i kind of make that space clean neat um incense you know things that are pleasant to the palate because that's what's going to prepare you for you know for your day and then i'll have a routine just basic routine once you've kind of cleared that day you know you you greet you greet yourself with some sun and you go through your morning routine and that's kind of you know, your self-preparation type approach um and then from there you kind of enter into your day and in, in a similar routine as you go through um and end your day so it's the, the spiritual practice of just kind of preparing the mind, the body and spirit and getting that alignment, that yin and yang in one fluid motion uh, is what's going to set the tone for your day and all we're in, start the day in gratitude. So um, that's how I started. Uh, that's kind of how I approach it. And it's always just looking for everything that treat people like people throughout the day. That's amazing. I, lo I love that. Um, gratitude. I mean, that 
it sounds very cliche, but it's powerful. Just being in gratitude. Um, and it's a great way to connect, you know, with the with the with the bigger universe. Okay, let's go to uh Shanae. Do you mind sharing with us? <laughs> oh hey, not at all. Can you hear me okay? Yes, indeed. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, so for me, um, I, I immediately think I, I immediately think of my connectedness to nature. I love being outside. I love being with around trees. I love being in the water. I love swimming. Just anything to do outside helps me to connect and um, reflect. And I love what he spoke about with gratitude. That's also kind of a part of that. It allows me to just disconnect from my day to day responsibilities and just really center within myself i'm actually training for a marathon next month and i'm really nervous <laughs> it's about it but that has really allowed me to focus on the interconnectedness between my mind and my body and pushing myself and just focusing on that relationship and so to me that's a spiritual experience because it's really allowing me to feel grounded to nature and to my own body and not focusing on external stress stressors going on in the world. Um, so that's a big one for me. And um, also kind of similar to what uh, Maurice spoke about too is, um, you know, I like to stretch and light incense. I love candles, anything that kind of creates a calming, warm atmosphere that allows me to focus on just being in the present and you know, just having that time to myself. So those are big ones. But for me, mainly the connectedness to nature is what allows me to kind of get in that spiritual space. So hiking, swimming, running, all of that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Samira, I know you can't wait to share with us. <laughs> and Samira, you look beautiful today, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love that top. You're just glowing. You look it's incredible. It's actually like a dress. Um, oh, what? Yeah, I was like, that is beautiful. Thank you. I have to send you one. Where are you based? Oh, oh my gosh, girl. I'm in Port Angeles, Washington. I'm a little ways <laughs> away. <laughs> in the but I'm the all beast. for you sending me one. I'll pay for shipping, sis. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Is it Shani yeah. or Shanae, by the way? Oh, it's Shanae. It looks like Shani. Okay. That's that's my mama for you. I don't know. <laughs> Good luck with your marathon. I know you got this, girl. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. So I would say, similar to Shanae, actually, before she even mentioned the nature part, I was like, I have to talk about nature because there's, so there's something about the elements that's very, like, primal. Um, I feel like the elements don't just exist on our external world, but also internally. Um, and we can use these states to like nurture different aspects of ourselves essentially. But um, for me personally, nature is a big one, but I think I like to, I think the word is omnist. I like to pick what I resonate with from loads of different spiritual systems and kind of see what, what resonates with me. Um, so my introduction to spirituality was like Hinduism in terms of like chakras and yoga and all these really fascinating concepts. But the older I get and the more in tune I become with my identity, as an African woman, I find that Kemet, um, the laws of Ma'at, um, the deities, even like Nigeria and Ifa, which is a very interesting spiritual system. There's just so much to learn that like, it's just incredible. But I'd say for me personally, um, I believe in a kind of universal, I don't know how to describe it, life force energy that not only has created us, but that we're also a part of. Um, so I feel like through raising our vibration and connecting with ourselves in a deeper way, doing the shadow work to kind of release everything that release everything that's no longer serving us, it allows us to ascend into um, higher states of our own being. Um, so for me personally, like it's really funny. Like even today, I didn't want to come in the call because your girl's been going through it. <laughs> um, I've just had a lot. Like I feel like the more work you do on yourself the more that shows up sometimes and to hold a space for yourself of like compassion and love and community is very important for healing like in this western society we're always taught that healing comes from um, an individual process but I think an African way of seeing it is com community is also healing so I knew that coming on this call today would make me feel better and I'd be able to connect with some beautiful people um, but yeah sorry I'm waffling what are you gonna say no, 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 we're just agreeing with you. Fire on. 
Thank you. I, I always over talk and then I'm like, relax, relax. But I know you guys can, can handle can handle all of my intensity. Um, yeah, for me, it's just like finding what resonates and trying to be in integrity with yourself first and foremost, because I feel like um, the relationship, relationship that we have with ourselves is the foundation of all our relationships. So the more um, we can get in contact with our, with our true self, and I think a lot of that is just removing all the nonsense that we've been taught um, and the things that we've kind of allowed to, pro not even allowed to program us, but like, yeah, just kind of like chipping away at the marble to reveal the true character. That's the path that I'm on. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much, Samira. Let's let's go to Hanan. Hanan. Hi, good morning. Greetings. Good morning. How are you all? You may hear my nephew in the background. That's fine. Right. Uh, you can even turn on the camera. We'll be happy to. Yes, to, to, I'm getting ready. Here. Thank you. Hi, how are you all doing? Um, I love this topic because as you all, you know, beautifully explained, spirituality is so important to us, especially right now just tapping in some type of way to tap in is very important. So um, I come from an Islamic background and, uh, you know, traditionally we pray five times a day and things like that. And, you know, that's something that I'm always striving to do. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that with my work schedule and things like that, but um, I'm just coming off of Ramadan, which is a fast. So that's definitely something that I always look forward to. Um, just restraining from, uh, reframing from, um, you know, eating, drinking, and, um, you know, just being more intentional about what I'm doing, you know, that's how I, uh, you know, look at that, and it's definitely humbling and um, uh, an interesting experience, you know, outer body experience, so that's one of the ways that I am, you know, try to connect with my spirituality, um, as far as day to day, I agree with all of you all just trying to like when I'm in my intimate space, setting the tone, you know, lighting some incense, as you said, and um, candles like those kind of get me in the mood. And um, when I'm in that moment, I just kind of like work on what comes up, you know what I mean? Like what's coming up in my mind? You know what? How do I feel? So I'm asking myself all these questions and um so I kind of experienced those feelings, like it could be shadow work. You know, I had a bad day, you know what I'm saying? So I'm reflecting on those type of moments, like how did I feel, how did I handle it? Um, and then I also like to journal, like writing, getting it out. That helps a lot too. Um, you know, just kind of setting the tone. I think there's a lot of beautiful people on YouTube who calls it um, uh, scripting. So when you're scripting, you're, you know, tapping into how you're feeling and you're also, you know, just kind of altering your mind about like what, what you're experiencing or if you want to bring in something good, if you're preparing for something in your future, you're scripting, you're writing about that and you, you're trying to tap into those energies of what you feel. It's like a, you know, trying to uh, raise your vibrations, you know what I mean? So, because you have so many distractions, but um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many levels to it when you, for me, like when I try to tap into my spirituality, like you all also mentioned nature and um, like I live in Georgia, so I'm not near the beach, but when I go somewhere and there's the beach, like that's just, I automatically just feel connected, you know, to the abundance of how it looks, you know, the, the, the ocean and just being out there and thinking about how, <clears throat> deep the ocean is and how many animals are out there or mammals yeah. you know just kind of thinking of the depth of that like yeah. that's so uh grounding for me too yeah. but um yeah <laughs> i think those are like the gist of it but so far everyone oh. has explained it beautifully okay. so like, thank you thank you thank you for sharing that um <laughs> so i heard you say shadow work and i also heard Sh uh, samira say shadow work what is that i have never heard that before i'm sorry can you uh, I could, well, I feel like shadow work is something that you deal with your subconscious, you know, like everybody has something levels to their um, being. So the, your subconscious is one, like say, for example, if you have a nightmare and, or I don't want to say, uh, well, yeah, I'll say a, na a nightmare. You're going to want to know why the heck did you have a weird dream about something? Or if, if it was an emotional thing, like you're going to tap into that. Or if you, um, you know, had a bad day or something like that, you know, you're going to like try to do the shadow work 
you know, peel back or uh, go back to your history of how you were raised, you know, something like that. And, you know, just kind of dive deep into your subconscious or your, yeah. your actions of doing things, I think. Just I think another, well. another way to put it is we, when we all mention that, the way I look at it too is almost deprogramming, like the things that we were taught that we always say get your generation of curses is, but going into things that may have caused hurt, pain, or things that just always been a part and we don't know why we did it. Just pull, peeling back the layers of those onions and then bringing new thoughts, ideas, and beliefs in. So it's kind of cleansing uh, your path. So as you're grounding yourself and centering, you're also making way for new ideas so that you can grow and not just lean on those stagnant ideas and beliefs. So when I say, when I say it, that, that's what I'm thinking as well. And just to add, um, the shadow is a term that was coined by um, a psychologist called Carl Jung. He also worked with Sigmund Freud. Who's, who I don't really agree with a lot of what he says, but Carl Jung is really, really powerful. Um, the, he, he defines the shadow as all of the things in our lives that we repress, um, have shame about, basically all the negative things in our lives. But, when, but he also says something really interesting, which is that there's also light shadow, which is basically... All the things, for example, let's say as a kid, you were a really good painter or an artist, but your parents didn't really um, approve or encourage that. You would have suppressed that as a child. You could, you might have suppressed that as a child because you felt like it wasn't accepted. So that's the light side of the shadow. So it's not always things that are negative, but overcoming that, integrating that into like who you are makes you such a powerful being, I believe, because, you know, with the law of polarity, there's light and dark. There's always opposing uh, kind of energies to each other and when we can come into balance and not be afraid to feel our feelings find ways find healthy ways to process them and move through them but integration is very important because um you can get lost in shadow work I believe and I've been there like it's like the more you uncover the more it comes up and you're like god damn what is life <laughs> but when you can when you can kind of what really helps me with shadow work I need to share this what really helps me with shadow work is to go into the role of the observer and to be a witness to what comes up. Because when um, you wake up one day and you're just not feeling good or something trigger something triggers you, it's easy to, to, to get into these thought patterns that kind of are like on autopilot. But when you can pause between stimulus and response, take a step back and ask yourself some questions, break that state and kind of, yeah, just observe. You learn so much about yourself. So shadow work, 10, 10 recommends. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's go to Malika. Hello, everyone. Um, so to me, spirituality, uh, sorry, spirituality is um, an act of service. Um, I think I truly find my soul when I help people. And the other thing is self-development. So currently, for example, I work with, um, um, you know, African Muslim population in Harlem. Um, and I work on domestic violence issue and the, the re recent refugees that came in. Um, I work with them and I truly, truly feel happy. Um, and the other thing is self-development. And that's why I love libraries. Unfortunately, nobody comes to the libraries anymore. <laughs> so it's always like <laughs> either it's nobody or it's, it's so like a, a ghost lives there. But um, a, a space like that, that Professor Osiri has created, uh, that truly like nourishes my soul. So I wanted to say thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mariam. Mariam, you, can you share? Okay. If you are not in a position to share, let's go to Ramon. Ramon, please. <clears throat> okay. Um, what's up, guys? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, I'm not really, um, I don't know right now. I don't really have much to say. Um, I'm more of a, yeah, I, I, like, I'm just kind of just, I don't have much to say when it comes to spirituality and religion and things like that. Um, I just want more of a, would you say, a perspective um, to be able to take you guys' ideas and be able to formulate uh, something that's more solid for me. Uh, yeah, when it comes to spirituality and religion, I'm, I don't really have much to say, man. No problem, that's fine. That's fine, thank you. How about you, Nina? 
Want to share something? Yeah, you, you don't have to share if you don't have anything to, to contribute. That's okay. Welcome here. Mm -hmm. It's evening here. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Okay. I come from a Christian background, and um, mine is um, a bit, will I say, it's not like the usual, usual, because I combine it with spirituality as well, because I have come to understood that um, in this life, what governs it is spiritual. What we are living, how we are living, it's all about spirituality. So what I do for most early in the morning, I find a secluded place, just me, myself, myself and my God, where I express my gratitude to him. Everything about my life is, will, will be real of gratitude. My family, extended my siblings all my achievements what i'm about to aspire and so on i thank him then when i now move before before doing that i get in the mood by listening to this um um it's um instruments instruments different instruments it can be sax it can be keyboard just no songs and it gets it sets me into the mode where i wallow in the in, in in expressing my gratitude to god when i'm satiated with that aspect i now speak to my day i now speak to my day commanding the sun to be in obedience to me even the earth i walk on that it will lead me to the path that will that will, i will gain what i intend to gain that day I will speak to the stars, I will speak to the air, I will speak to all the elements that they will walk in obedience to me, that all my utterances will be perfected. And whatever I want to achieve, I will speak it because I know the power of life lies in the tongues and there is power in the spoken words. So whatever I want, I say it. I speak it with every sincerity of heart within me. So that's my own spirituality, just the deep of spirituality. I know. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, back to you, Dr. E. I just wanted to get people to yeah, you know, no. share. It's good. I hope good. that was helpful. Um, <clears throat> um, just to give, every, give everybody, a, a, you know, to offer my two cents, um, for that, I was uh, raised an uh, evangelical Christian. I left the church well over 20 years ago and um, decided that I would not seek out any other religious system um, that I would try to understand spirit and spirituality uh, for myself without needing, um, for me, what would be a, the crutch of, of, of a belief system. And um, it's an ongoing and continuous journey. Um, sometimes it's very um, exciting. Sometimes it's scary. Um, but I've, I've been on this journey for, for a number of years now. So that's, that's, that's my experience. Before you continue, let me ask the, uh, the group. Uh, does anyone know Dr. Paul Easterling's uh, PhD, what he got his PhD in? Does anyone know? Okay. All right, Dr. Dr. E, you may want to share share with us a little bit about your academic background as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, not long after I left the church, I um, started a PhD program in religious studies. So that has helped to form my thoughts on a lot of a great number of things. Um, you know, just dissecting uh, the history and culture of, of African American Christianity, African American Islam, um, things like cult conjure, as we're talking about now. This has helped me kind of uh, um, guide guided me on my path through uh, spirituality ever since I've left uh, left the church. So pay attention to what he's reading. He has a PhD in religious studies. He's the man to go to. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> All, right. All right. Um, just continuing on. Uh, historically, the connection between conjure practices and the rituals of mainstream religious belief, uh, i.e., Christianity and or Islam, is undeniable among African Americans. 
Those forced across the Atlantic brought their beliefs with them and many times maintained knowledge and practice of traditional belief systems by colloquing them behind the veil of Christianity or Islam. Another word for this is syncreticism. This was done because the open practice of traditional African belief system was met by a vicious effort to convert the enslaved. Conversion was, was none, nothing less than a mandate to violently, violently strip African people of any vestiges of their culture in an effort to create a more docile and manageable individuals who capitulated to authority. However, this effort was quite unsuccessful as African Americans have maintained their beliefs and allowed them to evolve despite the attempts to suppress the African spirit. Albert Rapato supports, quote, despite the discontinuity and innovation of fundamental re religious perspectives of Africa uh, have continued to orient the lives of the, of the descendants of slaves in the new world, unquote. In order to retain their culture and humanity, enslaved Africans wove their belief system into a, a tapestry of their oppressive religion as a mode of survival. Africans caught practicing their religions or speaking their language were many times met with violence. Violence for European enslavers was a primary method of conversion and control. Despite this, however, Africans created amalgamated religious systems which synthesized the beliefs of their foremothers and fathers, the philosophies of their enslaved comrades from other African nations, and the dogmas of their oppressors, of their oppressors in order to su simply survive the violent conversion experience. As a result, what exists now in many conjure traditions is a language of religious, be religious belief that is thick with complexity. Further, conjure traditions took on many different forms. Participants, participants used food, dance, songs, masks, and spells as methods to communicate with the ethere ethereal world. Some conjure traditions such as rumba focus on conjuration through dance, whereas certain voodoo traditions serve particular deities whom have individual necessities, such as the pouring of rum or the lighting of cigar that had to be met before they would act on behalf of an individual or community. Essentially, conjure is a language that allows African people to communicate amongst themselves as well as the natural and spiritual worlds. This form of communication can be verbal as well as nonverbal, where the body, through dance, gestures, and postures, communicates certain ideas or moves and ethically, and ethnically unique from group to group. Further, as a language, as a language, it is a syntax and vocabulary that has evolved through the experience of African people and has taken on a variety of forms that support African practitioners in, in their particular environments. <clears throat> Let's take this a step further. There are innumerable religious traditions on the continent of Africa and within, and within a great number of them is the power to call forth or the ability to use the body and voice as a conduit to focus the spiritual powers of the unseen world to impact upon the realm of the living. In the Yoruba tradition, this ability can be summed up in the word ashe. Ashe, like the word amen, provides an emphasis to any spiritual conversation. As well, it represents the embodiment of the divine life force that exists within and throughout all things in the unseen of the seen and unseen worlds. William uh, Will Coleman, in the article "Amen and Ashe: The African American Protestant Worship and Its West African Ancestor," states, "Quote: Ashe is something like an all-pervasive spiritual energy, but it also it is also a term comparable to Amen, and it could be translated as." so be it, unquote. For the Yoruba, Ashe is the divine word handed down for the supreme deity all the room. The word enables communication between deities and mortals. The Yoruba belief system is, an ancient, is ancient with no clear origin date. Yoruba, Yoruba people believe they are descendants of the gods, goddesses and gods of their pantheon who are themselves manifestations of all the room. The deities of the pantheon of which there are hundreds, each embody aspects of the material world. For instance, Eshu is the spirit of change and individuality. Ogun is the god of iron. Oshu is the goddess of love and so forth. Further, European, Yoruba, excuse me, deities are equipped with the looks and personalities of humanity, which make them accessible to humans, unlike Olabrum.
who is so far above all does not need a uh, shape, especially a human shape. That is to say, the supremacy of all the rules so much that it cannot, it with a capital I, it cannot be reached by humans, which, which is why intermediaries or lesser goddesses and gods are necessary for the Yoruba, Yoruba people. For the Yoruba, the lesser deities are created through the Ashe of Olorun to, to be able to speak it out. As it, again, the capital uh, of the I, has the ultimate power to bring into existence or make things happen. Also, Ashe was given to particular avatars on Earth as conduits for human empowerment, specifically the royal python, Ere, the goblin viper, I'm a, a, um, butcher some of these words so I'm going to keep it moving the earthworm and the white snail and the woodpecker uh, other representations of our say for the Yoruba exist in, within inanimate objects such as certain sculptures and other works of art moreover for the Yoruba when the human personality is combined with the power of our say a sense of certainty or coolness is born coolness is the gentle but serious nature that exists within human beings as a result of a strong character and a keen understanding of the Ashe power. I wanted to pause there to allow for conversation and questions. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Um... <clears throat> Essentially, what I'm trying to deal with is this, this power that comes from just speaking, this 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 using your words, your voice, and not just that, but speaking with your body and in your gestures and your dance, the way you tilt your head, switch your hips, all these things are methods of expression, uh, spiritual expression that come that are, are intrinsic to uh, to the human being. It's important that you say that because I feel like uh... Sometimes we try to complicate things. We make right. it too complex. Um, for me, just paying attention to how we speak. Um, and then, I mean, it, so it could, it could just be even how we speak on a daily basis. And like you are saying, using certain words like ashe or amen um, can bring us into a place where we feel centered, where we feel um, connected to the universe, to other human beings. That's number one, just using words. Number two is even just paying attention to how we are breathing. Right. Um, yep. It's another way to uh, feel connected to the universe and to others. You know, I would like to actually invite, if I may, maybe Professor Mamo Muche, um, because, you know, he's from Ethiopia. And I've been curious about the Ethiopian Christianity. First church. Um, the, the church, yeah. Could, would you please um, share with us maybe even some of the words that, that they use that may be similar to Ashe or Amen, and maybe even go further to tell us a little bit about the, the, the originality of the church as it comes, as it relates to Ethiopia. It would be great to hear from you, sir. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, very important uh, question. I wish you you had asked me earlier so I could have prepared very well. <laughs> but uh, let me say to you, um, in the earliest part, Judaic and Orthodox Christianity were uh, similar, including also later Islam. The three of them, have similar uh, ways by which they understand God. I mean, uh, th th there is no difference between them about what, how to worship God 
and what God will do if you don't worship him properly and things like that. On that, there is similarity. Variations are when in the first part, there was a first Bible, which was Judaic and Orthodox Christian at the same time. But later the Bible, uh, there was a second version came, right? And then later also the Quran came, the Holy Quran. So, but if you see the, there's some very good relationship or similarity, if you do, I don't know how many of you have read the Quran. I, I had a chance to read it because I had to teach uh, uh, Islamic science. So I had to do it. So I was very fascinated by some of the really the, the key things. I still have some of them here. In fact, some of them, we also put them in the English language. We try to translate some of them. And, and we did things like that. So what the three religions, you see the Orthodox uh, Christianity is really the oldest Christian uh, uh, church and the oldest Christianity, I mean, thousands of years. So it's, uh, it's got very, uh, it's got strong legitimacy in the sense that the Greeks have similar church like us, the Russians have Orthodox church like that, the Egyptians have also Orthodox church like that. So we have similar churches rooted in the same, uh, uh, anchored in the same uh, biblical foundation. That's what we have. The most interesting thing I must tell you is that there was a, the first person who set up the history department in Addis Ababa University was a Swedish professor called Steven Rubinson. I know him. Uh, because we both were invited in Oslo, in Norway, to give the uh, keynote uh, for the 2007, the year, the Ethiopian calendar uh, year, when Ethiopia celebrated two, the second millennium. So he was invited and I was invited. I must tell you what happened. He said th three things that were extraordinary that made uh, the audience, over thousands of them were there and they gave him uh, over 11, 12 minutes standing ovation. Let me tell you what he said. It's very, very, I think it's important to listen to you. One of the things he said, when I first went to Ethiopia, I was sent by missionary churches to, uh, to go and right, Christianize Ethiopians. When I went there and I started seeing what the Ethiopian Orthodox Church does and, and start looking at the, all the, 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 the ancient manuscripts and everything, I got, I got embarrassed. I apologized, said. I said, I, am, I cannot come to Ethiopia, the most Christian country in the world. I cannot come here and try to, 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 <laughs> to, try to uh, change you into a, a Protestant religion that that I, am, I have been told to come and do, do for you. No, I apologize, he said. Then he just focused on history. And, and I must tell you that he, it was extraordinary. And then he said, at the same time, he said the calendar, the Julian calendar, the Gregorian calendar, all right, is, is the way it's linear. He, he actually explained it very well. And then he said the calendar, the Ethiopian calendar also is a, the best calendar, he said. The other thing he said is about the alphabet, the Ethiopian alphabet. He said, the Ethiopian alphabet is much better than the Roman, all right, and Latin alphabet. The reason is it expresses any sound, he said, any, any sound. For example, when you say C, he said, the letter C, you are saying C, S-E-A, C, and C, S-E-E. -E. But in the Ethiopian language, you don't have any. All the words, pa, pa, cha, cha, anything, anything you express, any sound has, has uh, an alphabet. And it's a, an, a, he says it's an, Af an African alphabet. Africans should use it across. In fact, the whole world should use it, he said. When he said these three things, they gave him 11 minutes standing ovation. <laughs> because they, they, they say to him, it's extraordinary. And then he said to me, Please come to Lund. He was living in Lund. Let me, I have a lot, because I was a history uh, professor, I have collected a lot of material. I really like you to come and stay one week with me in my house and 
honestly learned a lot about because there is a lot. For example, he said Emperor Menelik sent uh, in had a communique where he said in the period when the Italians want to fight him, he said they can't divide Africa. That's what he said. Our empire extends all the way to Madagascar, all the way, he said. And he said, I have the communique. I want to show you that written by, by them. So he was trying to tell me, to educate me a lot about all these things. I better leave you here because, and the only thing I want to say is, I just today did an interview on uh, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda and all this. Anti, the, although they are for, uh, they say they are Islam, but they, they do not respect the Quran and the Islamic, they really genuinely, they really violate it. So I was simply saying that this is not very good, what they are doing. And, and you cannot say you are Islam, Sharia and all this other, you know, law or whatever you, and then you attack Islam. No, it's not fair. So if you don't mind, uh, I would like you, my brother, Prince, uh, if we could play it because I send you the link. Can you play it and let all of us, and then I think we should discuss it. We should be more concrete because we're having serious challenges now. Just the, the, on Tuesday, they, the, the, the Africa Union transmission mission, uh, a lot of uh, Rwan, uh, Burundis uh, were killed and many things are happening still in, in Somalia. So, so it'd be very nice. And uh, I have the sister from Somalia. I hope she's still there. So I, I think let's listen to it. And then perhaps as uh, our brother uh, Galaxy, uh, you, you then can reflect on, let's reflect on it practically. What does it mean also <laughs> as to actually get all the religions also to start behaving? Religion must not be heartless. Religion must be heartful, soulful. You see, it must be like that. And it should not be just for uh, interests and pursuing things like that. So that's what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Can you please play it for me? Sure, sure. I was smiling because you, you called him brother Galaxy. So actually that's his phone. His name is uh, E. <laughs> Dr. E. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it says Galaxy. Oh yeah, there is, oh, there is an E. Oh, I forgot the E. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. E Galaxy. That's his new name, e Gal now, <laughs> Brother Galaxy. Okay, so um just make sure I, I get it. So are you are you are you saying though that the Ethiopian church is the oldest church in, in the world? Are yes, it's that? the oldest church. church. The, the oldest African church. It's not oh. just Ethiopian, it's African. African church. Because in the ancient in the ancient time, Ethiopia came at Ancient uh, Egypt were all similar names. Right, right. They have similar names. So it was. It came very, very old. It's one of the oldest church. It, I just told you that the Judaic and the Orthodox changed. They were together, and then eventually Islam came. It, the three, they are connected. Three of them. So very well connected. So for those of you uh, who have who uh, share uh, the photos of of Jesus. If you have photos of Jesus in your house, um, you should make sure he has a, the right um, complexion. It's important. Okay, um, image. The, yes, it's about, we, yes, can, we, can, yes. We, can, we can come yes. back to that uh, later on, at uh, least based on what he's, he's saying here. Yes. Now, I think I, I cannot uh, play this video without express permission from Dr. E because this is, this is his um, time and his lecture. Uh, Dr. E, uh, uh, Professor Mama Mumuche sent a link to a video he wants us to watch and maybe perhaps uh, discuss. I'm not sure if, if you... It's about, about, it's a few minutes, it's not much, so... Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, all right. No problem. Now that I have the, the permission, let me go ahead and play it. And Thank you. Can, yeah. One second. Okay, let's see here. I don't think it will it, it place. And uh, can you see my screen? Yes, can you see? Yes, it? yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Al Shabaab. Africa in view is a group of militants who claim to have been responsible for an armed attack on the African Union peacekeepers base in Somalia. The attack comes as Somalia prepares to hold long-delayed presidential elections. President Hassan condemned the attack and called for increased military support. 
Al-Shabaab has been fighting for years to topple the central government and implant its rule in the country based on its strict interpretation of Sharia, Islamic law. Now, Professor Mamo Muchi, a pan-African scholar at the Italian University of Technology, joins us now to unpack this latest development. Professor Mamo, thank you, Muchi, thank you so much, of course, for joining us uh, this morning for this conversation. We know that AU forces, uh, Professor, have been in Somalia since 2007 trying to stabilize that country. They successfully managed to remove al-Shabaab from the capital Mogadishu in 2011. What should we make of this latest attack by al-Shabaab in Somalia or that Somalian base? Um, as you rightly said, this is a, a really a very sad situation that, uh, that uh, al-Shabaab uh, that wants to uh, promote uh, al-Sharia, this uh, uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalist, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, approach, you know, religion. Uh, I think it's uh, got very uh, uh, support also with uh, Al Qaeda, uh, Boko Haram. Many of these uh, really extremist uh, Islamic re religions uh, groups are 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 actually aligned together. And they are trying to, I think a country like Somalia is very, very divided. Uh, it has never been really uh, strong, never united. Although it has a, a similar language, everything like that. But because uh, they were divided by the colonially, you know, the French part was there, the Italian part, the British part was there. Then the clan system was there. And then the, in the religion, although the, they are Islam, but they also have these extreme uh, religions. So the division is still in uh, the country is very strong, and uh, that that division makes them not work together. So it allows this extremist uh, Al Shabaab to continue to to even though it may go down, it will come back again. I think the situation is uh, very very alarming, and I think uh, that's what I I, I really uh, see, and I think this uh, what happened recently is. Uh, the idea was that this uh, APMS uh, transition mission was supposed to finish by 2024. But now it looks like if they are fighting them, it means the African Union has to actually uh, strongly take action to make sure that Somalia becomes normal. The problem is that in the country, they, they have delayed election. There's not a normal thing. Even the, the, the central government in Mogadishu is not uh, st is still fragile. Because of this, I think, the the conflict will continue for, mm -hmm. for for quite some time. It's not going to be uh, settled very easily. That's mm. the that's that's what I can say. Mm. Well, yeah. Professor, you've characterized developments uh, in Somalia as as alarming, given the the, the divisions uh, amongst the people. We know that just last week, in fact, the Somali Parliament did manage to elect its speakers. This is. Some of the gains that have been made um, in, in recent times, and of course, as the country casts its eyes towards these presidential elections, how much of a threat does Al Shabaab pose when we're talking about the transitional efforts that Somalians are underway with presently, with the help of the AU and its many forces? What what we uh, we hear is that in the different parts of the country, the rural areas and so on. The, the Al Shabaab influence is very, very strong. Mm. In other words, a lot of the ordinary people also join them. If that is happening, even though there may be uh, a government, uh, you know, election done, and the parliament and so on, uh, it still might be that even if the government also has its own army and so on, it it, it still will the conflict may continue unless a solution is found where Al Shabaab could be under the rule of law. If that uh, is not happening, uh, if they, even if you run elections, all right, and Al Shabaab is still functioning, it means the conflict will continue. So, what you you saw now, what they did with this uh, African Union trans transition mission, uh, and then a lot of uh, people from Burundi. These are uh, the forces are 
the AU uh, set them up. They are from Djibouti, from Kenya, from Uganda, all right, and from Burundi. And uh, the, the ones that have been killed most, we were told, were from Burundi. What will continue to happen is that they will, even if this external uh, uh, AU mission is there, uh, if and then even the Somali army is there, if Al Shabaab is an, exists as an army, it will continue also to the the, the conflict will continue. Uh, disruption will come, uh, not regularly, but maybe as it happened now, it could come again, even if there's a proper election done and uh, settled. The only, I think the best uh, approach is to have the religions. Why are uh, we in Africa use religions, ethnic language differences and others to devalue ourselves, to de-Africanize ourselves? Why don't we upgrade ourselves as African citizens with human rights, with social solidarity, with social justice as, be, as the main values to make us actually come together? And we should not continue to all the divisions that, that were also inherited from the colonial time. I think something is what's happening with Somalia. With Somalia, we are seeing many things. Mm. The division from the colonial times, the division with religion still exists. All right? The division with clans still exists. And, and also the now current division also when you have many or a number of political parties, they also uh, also come into conflict. So uh, even how relate, you know how to seize power, how to gain power, how to acquire power also becomes a challenge. Since we if we are not clar there's no clarity on how we want to move on to try to really create a system, governance, institutions, leadership uh, approaches, where service of the people is number one, the priority, priority, not what the, the different uh, groups, uh, their own self-interest matters to them more than what matters to the people. If this continues, I think what you can see is that the conflict from Somalia will not stop. It's mm. going to continue. That's mm. what I see. Well, Professor Muchi, some may argue, in fact, that the social political task that you're alluding to, the unification of Somalians across these divided lines, be it language, be it religion, is a task that will largely fall onto whatever new government, central government, is formed post the conflict that we're seeing right now. But if we were to focus on the conflict, which is currently still destabilizing Somalia. What's the answer to that? I mean, is it a case of, you know, the AU uh, supplementing the transition mission with more forces, um, adding more soldiers to the contingent that's already on the ground to shore up a lot of these processes that are underway so that we, can't, we can eventually get to the task of, of unifying Somalians um, across these lines that you've already alluded to? Yes. Thank you, question. Good question. I think this problem for in Somalia is uh, is amazing. First, Somalia, as a, in terms of language, they and the religion, they are not divided. Y even if you have the same religion, Islam, most of them do it. But then you have Al Shabab, all right, uh, different uh, Sunni and this, and then you divide yourselves. This kind of thing. Why even you, you you are the same religion, but you are divided. You see, it's the same thing. Like you could be Christians, but you could be Lutheran. You could be uh, yeah, Pentecostal. You could be uh, all kinds of di different. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the different religions. You could then you you say my religion is better than your religion. All right, my way of worshiping is better than you. Don't say that. If we have one God, why do we have to always <laughs> say? My way is better than yours. You, I should respect you, you, your religion. You should respect my religion, whatever religion I have. And if we, we have one God, and if we have too many religions, why, would, why do we become heartless with, with, uh, with, with our religion, saying my religion is better than another religion? This is not fair. Mm. Even God will not uh, value this. But why are they doing this in Somalia? You see, the, with the language side, the religion side, they have more similarities than other places than we, we have in Africa. But still, there they, they should be an example to, to, for unity. Rather, they become the wrong. They, they are actually dividing themselves. The other key problem, as you mentioned, is very important, is this uh, Islamic uh, extremists are now uniting 
and and becoming uh, like they are they are uh, uh, they are fighting everywhere from Nigeria, uh, Mozambique. Uh, you know they are everywhere now. Uh, Somalia, everywhere is happening. So what we should do now is, I think, the African Union and even internationally, there should be uh, even the the Islamic religion. Uh, those who believe in the normalized Islamic religion even the religious institutions, they all should now unite, mm -hmm. trying to control, well, to control this, this extremism. Otherwise, it's going to continue. More African countries will be affected. Right. Okay. I think, uh, I think that um, that essentially is, highlights the crux of my argument. Um, is that religion is a, a tool. It, it can be used to build or it can be used to destroy. But I think that that what uh, Professor uh, Mamu was talking about is, is essentially a point of my argument, is that religion is a tool. It, it, it's a tool. My question to the group and to you, Professor Muche, is, I mean, you talk, I like, the tone of your reasoning. You really identify the fact that Africans are using religion to divide each other. I mean, and then of course they're using other, other things, but then you, you are calling for unity. So how can we leverage, since we're on that topic of religion and spirituality, how can we leverage religion or spirituality or whatever to unite. How can we do that? The, you, you know the I, I I tried to answer that question in the the, the end. Can can you can you finish the the last okay. there's the last one? Yes, it just got interrupted. Hang on, but well, we'll do that. Let me find it again. Okay. Yes. Can you, can, can you hear this? In Somalia and in several other regions across the continent where uh, you have fertile ground in sort of divided countries or countries uh, that have different religions uh, that are causing a, a tenuous situation to arise, you find extremism taking advantage of that uh, and trying to supplant any kind of governance and rule or authority in that area. Are other regions at risk of something similar happening to them? Yes, I think very important question. This uh, Al Shabaab type, Al Qaeda, uh, Boko Haram type, uh, they are now spreading, and the extremism is going uh, on. And my worry is, of all places, we in Africa might be affected. We have, we, we have weak. Uh, uh, the, the weak governments, mainly, you know, that we don't have uh, governments that are uh, there for w with strong institutional uh, foundations. So what we have is we we are weak in the sense that a lot of our politicians are not functioning properly because of this uh, situation. My worry is that this extremists might even uh, accelerate the the corruption and the the conflict and the, even the dis destruction in many African countries. So I, I worry about it generally, to, to be honest with you. So that's why the, the if we have the Africa Union, uh, if there is a generally a union, this the time must be this must be a priority of priorities to make sure that a control of this extremism must be done, and also the Islamic uh, uh, religious. Uh, uh, Groups that are normal, that are not uh, extremists, must also really genuinely uh, unite with the African Union and others, and even internationally, all others that are uh, that have uh, that that can combine with us must really work very strongly to make sure that Africa is not again put under this. Uh, that we faced colonialism, now we are going to face uh, religious extremism, and this is not fair. And I think the most important thing also is that we should also really uh, now uh, all of us should discuss about how we should also deal with religion 
religious differences, ethnic differences, these kind of differences, why should we politicize them? And why should we make them, you know, saying that my way is better than yours? This is not fair also. Mm. This is not, even God will not be happy with this because you are actually hurting God, not just human beings, not even the countries, mm. not even the people. So I think this, we need to find now a new approach, a new paradigm shift uh, from really uh, going from extremism, from just saying that uh, valuing your own, what you believe in, and saying other, what other pe people believe, the religion they believe is worse than yours. This kind of thinking must be completely removed from the m mindset of everyone. Unless this is, this is happening, unless an education is done to make sure from kindergarten to tertiary level, everyone must be educated also mm -hmm. to make sure that our values are good. We have moral intelligence. We have emotional intelligence, not just intellectual and other intelligence. We need to combine this so that politically we do not really get involved in this extremism and use religion. It's also anti-Islam, to be honest with you, to use Islamic religion to kill in the, uh, as an Islamist, other people is not right because it's not, you are not supposed to kill people using religion. Well, it's, Professor it's not Mushi, fair. You see, that's what it is. Right. That's Professor, what my suggestion is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Professor Mamo Muchi, we are going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for that conversation and that for. You did answer the question, um, indeed. And that was we need to teach. We need to teach it um, from from kindergarten all the way to the tertiary level. Yeah. My, my, the question now is, what are we teaching to remove that divisiveness? What what is the content that we are teaching? What are we should teach? Yeah. Any anybody any any? Yes. any yeah. Go ahead, please. Yep. Okay, feel free to, to respond, or Dr. Mamo or Muche, or anybody you can. I mean, what yeah, are, what do, are, do you want me to? Yes, yes. go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, the, the key thing we need to, to uh, focus on now is uh, even Islam, the, the, their understanding of the Quran, I mean, the Holy Quran, I mean, the, they should really genuinely understand it and not misuse it. You know, they mustn't politicize it. They mustn't use armed struggle to hurt other Islam the, the, by saying that you're different from me. No, this is wrong. So the whole Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda and uh, Al-Shabaab, Al they must, but Al-Qaeda was, as you know, uh, was created also with American intelligence. It was a very complicated thing. The Soviet Union, remember that period. It was a complicated, it was political thing that actually in, in, created it later than it, it started opposing America. It's initially it started with that, yeah? So we, we, we have a very complicated situation. How this, this whole entire uh, extremism, you know, anti-Islam, it is very much anti-Islam also. I mean, really, genuinely. And uh, it doesn't go with all the, the teaching of the Quran and the Holy Quran, it doesn't. So it does. It disrespects also the, the the Islamic faith. So because of that, there must be a way to really make sure that these extremists are actually. Uh, we, I don't want them to die or anything like that. But we there must be a way to make them understand and and respect the Islamic faith and and come back to a normal uh, to normality. But for for all of us. When we do study religion, if we have re their religious studies and our uh, brother got a, a PhD in religious studies and everything, but is we need to make sure that everyone should learn if God created all of us, all right? Then we should all believe in that. Even my your way of going, in other words, you may drive a car, you may uh, fly with an uh, airplane, or you might uh, ride a horse, or you might walk. Which, you, to go to a certain destination, you may use different routes. But, but the fact that you, you use different routes does not make you different. 
you, you know, that does not make you different from uh, the, the, your belief in God. You still believe in God. But I must not say, because you are walking, because you are uh, riding a horse, because you are uh, driving a car, because you are flying an aircraft, I, I shouldn't say, yours is better than mine. No. We should say, if, no matter how we do it, you, all, you, you are doing the same thing I, you want to do, I'm doing, which is worship God. If we're doing the same thing, there is no need to fight each other. That's what I think something like that is what we need. That's a, that's a good point. Okay, go Professor, ahead. Malik. Can, I, can I just add a few things? Um, yes. I, yeah, I highly respect what uh, Professor Mamu said, and he's correct. And um, I've read Quran, and um, my religion has nothing to do with violence or anything. In, in fact, Islam represents peace. Um, the only Absolutely. Uh, thing the only thing that i wanted to say is this like when we discuss um and you know in the news and in the media just because of the actions of this terrorist group a lot of muslims uh you know fall prey and uh, we are really misrepresented and we are targeted in, and i've seen that all over you know all over the world <laughs> but when we discuss these things we also should discuss that um, you know, for example, in the case of Afghanistan, who created Taliban? We all know it's a creation of CIA. And for example, Palestine, with the recent events, you know, what's happening, um, how disrespectful it was for people to come into the, uh, you know, a, a, a place where Muslims pray, you know, and, and to do these things. So when we talk about, uh, you know, Muslims, let's just remember that it's not all black and white. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I totally Thank agree. You. Well said. Thank you. Um, I yes. also Hello. come from a Muslim background. Um, I was, and when I was younger, and I used to like attend Quranic school and all these different things. It clearly states in the Quran, if you kill one person, God will count it as if you've killed the whole of mankind. And if you save one person, it's the same thing as well. So when these extreme, yes. extreme, and even the word extreme, is it really extreme? And extreme is like a great extent of something. These people are not extreme because they're not extreme within what Islam is teaching. It's totally nonsense. Like um, similar to what Malika said in Palestine is literally another apartheid, but because um, a lot of Arab, a lot of Muslim countries don't have solidarity either. And I feel like it's a worldwide issue of just, the Western like countries tapping into these communities and these countries to overtake it, to strip them of their resources by creating instability. Um, I think the problem is a lot deeper. It's, it's almost like it's, it's almost like a colonial mindset of dividing, conquering and, and destabilizing countries. But it's, it's, it's a whole paradigm shift that we need. Like, I feel like these people are deeply hurting. All these Al-Shabaab, these terrorist groups. It's not that they need therapy. <laughs> They need therapy like to kill to kill people who look like you in your own country that's a mental illness it's beyond just religion i think i think they just get indoctrinated from young and a lot of these similar to what malika was saying a few weeks ago in, ter um, in terms of like young kids in her, in her country a lot of the times these extremist groups target young people and they they target poor young children and tell them stuff like you know if you join our army we'll support you blah 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 it's a sense of community, even though they know deep down what they're doing isn't correct. But I feel like it's a whole paradigm shift. Like um, these people need compassion. They need not for us to show them compassion, but for them to raise in their own compassion. I don't know. It's a whole system, systemic change. And I think it will take a while, but it starts from education. I agree. Um, also, when it comes to Islamic extremism, I think having prominent Islamic figures share real like Islam is beautiful I know I spoke a lot about my spiritual journey but Islam is definitely a foundation for me but um like we need education on multiple levels in human empathy in changing the conditions of a country to allow their government to have like more emotional intelligence for the population and not just be like pawns for the west um who allow them to come in and just like shake everything up for a bit of money um, like even in Africa, I know this isn't related, but even in Africa, in China, the way China have, have started to creep their little toes in to, um, to destabilize and just take profit. Like, but we just need a whole revolution, I believe. <laughs> like, uh, I think, can, go on, Malika. Yeah, I just no, wanted to add something, Samira, what you yeah. summarized 
better than me, but um, you know, the reason I said to Dr. Mamou last week that we need people like you in politics. Yes, uh, Samira, you're very kind, by the way. I, I don't feel sorry for the terrorists, you know. I, you know, I've seen what they've done and I don't feel sorry for them. But mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, you know, we need people who are in power and who can change things. You, you said revolution. I agree, we need a revolution. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. just look at the recent crisis. I am against what Russia did to Ukraine, but at mm -hmm. the same time, why do they get such a like uh, a favoritism and, and, a, tr and a special mm -hmm. treatment? And what about the Palestinians, Syrians, and you know, mm -hmm. after, why are they like left out? Mm -hmm. So that, that's another thing. And we, we cannot change. Yeah, we will. Maybe they'll go to therapy. Maybe they'll change. But at the same time, do we have so much time while people are mm -hmm. dying, while mm -hmm. Afghans are selling their kidneys just to save their, uh, you know, from, from being hungry? I feel like we need this big shift. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, religious, religion is used in a bad way. But like a, a bigger holistic picture, it has nothing to do with religion. It's who are in power and who, yes. uh, you know, um, controls media and everything else. I'm sorry, I'm a bit mm. angry with all the situation. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a bit emotional. No, I here. feel the same, especially Palestine. Like, it breaks my heart. Some of the most, like, heart... Like, I've met some Palestinians, and the way they're so warm and open-hearted, it's like people who suffer really develop, like, this strength that is really admirable. But, yeah, I totally agree. It starts with politics as well. Like, when the government are powerful enough and united within their whole country and, and the people really believe in them, I feel like the energy is different. Um, it definitely starts at a political level and just taking power back from the West, I believe. The West, they just go into countries and ruin them for profit. They have all this money and it's never enough. They always want more. Like, I feel like it's that's greed. a mental illness. It's greed at the end of the greed day. It's greed, yeah. yeah. Hundred. It's toxicity. And... Mm. and People are trying to control. It's, I mean, it's at this point, it's not even about the religion. It's just the mm -hmm. control, the greed, the, the toxicity that's being slandered everywhere, you know? And yeah, it's, it's the revolution needs to happen all around the world, you know? Um, yeah. It's, it's true. Like they try to paint these, these terrorists as Islamic or whatever. If it's a black person, they're African. When it's white people shooting schools up in America, they, they say they have yeah. mental illness. There's so much compassion for the white gays and the white, like, it's ridiculous. It's nothing to do with the religion. It's, it's greed. It's, it's, it's a mental illness, I believe. And when I said therapy, I did literally mean it, but I think that would actually help. <laughs> I, I feel like we all need therapy, <laughs> the whole world. Literally. I have a question uh, for Professor Muche. Uh, he talked about the he talked about the curriculum needing to be one that teaches um, one God, right? So my question is, what what about? Um, those who don't believe in, in a God, where, where do they fit? Because what, what you're saying is there are different parts to a God. Let's all focus, you know, let's all say we believe in one God and all, but how about those who don't believe in a God? Where, where do they fit? No, the, I, I think the, the majority of humanity uh, have religions. If we can address those who believe in God and Allah uh, and get them to find a way to understand each other, to tolerate each other, to value each other, and not to say my way of worshiping God or Allah <clears throat> is better than, and not to say something like that, but understand that the variety of ways of them reaching God is something that should be tolerated. If this education is, I mean, instead of uh, when you do uh, education, if you are uh, Muslim, if you don't include other religions, uh, and if you are Christian, you don't include other religions. If you are Buddhist, you don't include other. I think what we need to do is we really need to bring uh, all those who believe in this, those who do not believe, uh, the pagans and uh, others that don't believe in uh, 
in uh, God, as long as they don't attack religion, those who believe in God, in, uh, who have religions, and they uh, they they just uh, become normal, then there's no problem. They don't have to go to school they, if, if they don't want to do it. But but from from the way I see, billions of people have religions, and if we get a way to all of them to make them understand, all right, that the the way to reach out to reach God and the variety of ways by which we reach God. All right, if we drive, if we ride a horse, or if we, uh, uh, you know, fly with an airplane, all right, if we walk, if we uh, do a marathon race, it doesn't matter. The, the various ways by which we do it should not be seen as better than, than another. Let, let's just do whichever ways, all right? Uh, and then the key thing is if we, if we say others, the way they believe God, the way they worship God is wrong and we should attack them, we should fight them, we should kill them, then that we should always say, we should teach in when we do religious studies, we should say that this is not just hurting people, it's also hurting God. I don't think God would tolerate those who do this kind of, who use his name it's, to it's actually like, do injustice. I think it's not. What, that's what I, I would suggest. The, 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 my way of uh, responding to your question is this. Thank you very much. It seems that we're doing a lot yes, of please. heavy lifting for God. Um, this God, for, for, you know, like it or not, it's, it's still just an idea because um, there's no... The, the, that the existence of God is not fact. It, it's an idea. So um, using using any type of religion as a, as a way to connect humanity will always fall short because we'll always, we, everybody sees God as different. It becomes an issue of belief in my way or your way. And I think that we're doing a lot of heavy lifting for a thing that we are not even sure is is there, and what the, the the object of the point of my presentation is is to center center ourselves on human responsibility, human responsibility. What is our responsibility to ourselves and to each other without having to drag the idea of God into the middle of it? So we can all have this different opinion, different perspective, and essentially uh, uh, create uh, divisions between us. <clears throat> it's a lot of heavy lifting we're doing for uh, for ideas, for ancient ideas that are impossible to validate. So can I just say something? Uh, God is an idea, you, you say something like that. The most important thing is uh, all the religions say there is a supreme creator and they, they gave a name, Allah, God, and, and different religions also have given different names. But sure. they are saying that we, we humans are not, no, hold on a second. We, we humans are not just, uh, uh, evolved just uh, you know uh, biologically it's not like that there was a supreme creator and in if this creator of course this creator we may not see him we may not see uh, her or him or whatever but we may uh, we we imagine him. it's an imagination it's a, yeah, it's, it's a kind of imagination that this yes, it's, it's an imagination uh, uh, and as also in the Bible and everything is described very well. Look what has happened with the Jesus Christ and so on. Recently, there was a resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even, the, even they say the Supreme Creator, not only did he, did this Supreme Creator destroy corruption, he also destroyed death. In other words, in other words, he, the, the key thing, what, what from the Christian side, they say just the resurrection of Christ means that all of us who die will also live in heaven or in heaven, whatever it is. In right, other words, right. our, our spirits, our soul, our hearts 
is not our body. All of us live infinitely more in the universe in infinite time. So whatever it is, it's a great philosophy and a great thinking and a great imagination. And this idea of Supreme Creator is there. All what I'm saying to you is that all of them who believe in this, who actually believe in this, must not kill each other. If they do that, they are actually also affecting the Supreme Creator. The Supreme Creator will not value for, for he, the Supreme Creator is someone who killed death, who killed corruption. How can you use weapons to kill in using his name? All right, this is wrong. So I think this kind of imagination and thinking is brilliant. And it's very, very important that the entire universe, all those who believe in religion, every religion, they must know this and they must value it. And they must appreciate that what they are doing when they kill someone, that person, as far as if you are on the Christian side, that person, you kill that person actually will live because death has been killed also by the, the way they have been thinking about it. So because of all these very, very extraordinary ideas, imagine, really sincerely speaking, because of that, I do not understand why we have all these extremists or whatever you call them, uh, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, uh, Boko Haram and all this. And also even in the Christian sites also, they, they say, uh, the Protestants say we're better than you, that kind of thing. We shouldn't say like that. Buddhists are this and that, we shouldn't. We should just value each other, respect each other. And then I, I say your way of reaching out to God is your way and I respect you. And I, 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 you don't have to follow that one. You follow your own too. And please also don't respect mine and that's it. Then we have right. a great time, peaceful right. time and secure time and everything will go well and the world will be better. And is there a way to do that with how having to bring in this third party that we call God? It's, it's, it's me and you here. So why must I bring a, another entity into this conversation? Is there a way to, uh, to do exactly what you're saying without having to 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 lug in the weight of, of a supreme deity uh, into the conversation. And that, that's what I'm saying. Like we, we, we have this, we, it's just us talking here. I don't need to bring in a, a, a third party for me to say, you're a human being and I love and respect you as such, period. I don't need the third party for that. No, maybe the third party is there advising you to say exactly that. <laughs> Maybe right. he's telling well, yeah. you. Well, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that that is the case. Um, again, just again, using a using a third party seems to um, be the 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 uh, the thing that creates the problem. Because of how I see that third party and how you see the third party is different. Now we have conflict because we then uh, brought in uh, an entity that is purely of our imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when um, we believe that the supreme being is telling us certain things that goes against the rights of the other. I mean, that's what the problem right. is. So, but but I, I like the idea that you know, uh, God, God is valid. God is an imagination. God is an imagination of our mind, and that philosophy of God, um, I. I I, I like that. It's an idea that we all have constructed and we are trying to reach. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If we could just keep it at that level. We have, right. we have, we have created an idea of perfection that we cannot, we, we know we don't have, and then we all are striving to be that. That is beautiful, right? And I think that is what all these stories are telling us. Like, you know, they, what is the, the Pope stories in Quran or, or, or the Bible or, or other religious texts? They're just telling us that that we human beings have constructed um, uh, these uh, uh, perfect being, and we all are striving to be that. So let's look at, take a look at the story of Jesus, for example. Right. So Jesus was nailed on the cross. You know, he was tortured, and while on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they uh, did. 
Now, of course, scholars would argue that if Jesus didn't exist, you know, there's no, right? So, or maybe there is no such, 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 such a person called Jesus, even if he did exist, it may not be there in the way we are imagining it. But the important thing is not that Jesus existed or not. The important thing is the story there. The, the, the story being that someone could have some perfect idea of love where he's been tortured by these people, but yet he found it in himself to forgive, right? So if we can learn to you know, take some of those stories, those redemptive stories, those stories of humanity in these texts and just focus on those, I think it will be a much better world um, uh, that we are, we're gonna have. I mean, that, that will be my, my submission. And yeah. I think that will help even for those who don't believe in God. We, we, we could just say, look, we are not saying that you have to believe in this. What we're saying is here is a story that we all are trying to subscribe to. It is a beautiful story. And we could, again, we could grab that story from the Quran, from the Bible, from anywhere, any, any text and try to live up to it. Yeah, but those stories of redemption are not really, um, they're, they're not focused, they're not just, they don't just come from Islam and, and, and Christianity. I mean, uh, if I can just throw in um, uh, Iron Man, right? The Iron Man from the MCU. He, he sacrificed himself, right? He, he gave his life and all that stuff. What I'm getting, what I'm, the point I'm getting to is that the common denominator in all these stories, you know, whether it's for the Yoruba, for the Esur, or for Christianity, is the human being. Those stories come from us, right? And until we start focusing our, our energy on, our, on, our, on how we are creating the stories and what we want out of them, and 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 let go of this of this third party, our imagination, right? This this third party of us creating a being uh, um, as as something to uh, glorify and blame for the trials and tribulations of, of our life, and get back to the point, which is our human experience. We're always going to be uh, uh, bumping into each other, hmm. always. Well, that's well said. Okay. Any 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 thoughts, uh, Shanae? Any any reactions? Um, All religions must. Yeah, a little bit. So when Dr. E, when you were speaking, I kept thinking of Rothenberger's ecological systems theory, and how it really how it, it's kind of a circle within a circle within a circle, and it starts with the with the individual first. Right. And I kept thinking about that theory in conjunction with what you were talking about. And I have to say, I agree. It's really focusing on this, on the person firstly, and then we can extend and build the community. But if we ourselves aren't working on trying to grow or, or, or being accepting of whatever information is being given to us, then there isn't going to be change. But right. I think, but on the contrary too, it, for young people, especially, um, there needs to be some, <clears throat> excuse me, there needs to be some external presence to help encourage those thoughts in the first place too. So it's, it, I, I don't know, but that was just kind of a, something that was just popping up in my head. Hmm. Wow. This is a, a fantastic dialogue. <clears throat> Dr. E, please go ahead. Um, all right, <laughs> we kind of, move well beyond uh, my presentation here. So um, we got like 20 minutes left. Yes, and we don't have to uh, use it all, but. Right, right. Um, so I, I will um, let's, I'll go ahead and, and try to ramp, wrap up and uh, provide a, a summation. Um, personally, all right. Um, as I told you before, I left the church uh, years ago, over 20 years ago. Um, and then, of course, I started having kids. Um, and so the question, especially the, the one that came from me, uh, to me from my parents is, you know, how, what are you going to teach them uh, about God? Um, and the best answer I can give them is that uh, whatever they understand about God comes from within and to focus on that energy first and to not um, 
rely or feel like you need uh, something external um, to to validate your existence or to validate your feelings or to validate your your ideas or validate your history or or, or anything like that. To focus on um, the your personal journey as a human being on this planet, um, and as 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 that or as such, um, my kids have you know they've asked me about ideas of God and and uh, so on and so forth. So I've, I've always tried to kind of point them inward. Um, that process has served us well. Um, but of course, as they grow up, they will encounter people who, uh, you know, have religious belief and, you know, how, are born into certain traditions. And um, I just want for them, as I want for uh, the rest of humanity to emphasize the need uh, for personal growth. Um, we, we spoke about um, um, revolution. Um, I would like to see a, not a revolution, which is a spinning about in place, but yet an evolution to where we grow and we move on from um, this uh, merry-go-round of, of belief and violence that we seem to be, to be uh, caught up in. And, and that is the essential point uh, of my discussion is for us to, to take our belief, uh, our religious belief, um, realize the personal uh, limitations of it and the personal beauty of it, but to move on from it so we can grow as, as, a, as a species, as a, as a human species, um, rather than as a uh, collection of tribes who are continuously uh, war over ideas that none of us can can validate. Well said. Well said. Any other final thoughts from men from anybody else before we we leave? Yeah. Paul. Professor Paul Luce, go ahead, and then Malika. All, all those who have. Uh, religious religious differences must must not be used for conflict. They must be the differences must be appreciated, and uh, the similarity they all express finally with this supreme being. Whether that supreme being, as uh, as uh, our doctor said, is exists or not is another the question. The question is that this supreme being is something that all of them actually are connected with. They, they, their similarity. They should celebrate that similarity, celebrate the similarity to to the supreme being, and the different ways by which they reach to this supreme god. They should appreciate. No fighting, no killing each other, no. Uh, uh, not saying one is better than the other. That I think in the religious sphere, in the knowledge, imagination of the, and wisdom in the religious sphere, we must find a way to make sure that everyone, every human being that is, uh, believes in uh, the Supreme being, not those that believe in it, the, the pagans and others, that's their problem. That's fine. But they, but they, as long as they don't, they don't say if you are religious, and uh, we don't we don't think really being religious is good, and then we will fight you, and we'll also create armed struggle. If they say that, then again the pagans are also to be managed. But if they don't do anything, uh, they don't fight on anything like that. Their right to not believe in God is also not an issue for us. But I think the key thing is to save humanity, and to save uh, our planet and to really solve the world, to create a health uh, a community of hope for everyone. I think we need really to have a new value, a new approach, and really remo remove all this extremism that, uh, that, uh, from Islam. Th this is unfair to actually all these things created. If initially, this was not created by Islamists. They were created by American CIA and so on. But later, it, it spread. And now it's creating all kinds of uh, uh, problem. So I, I hope uh, I hope this can be managed. Eventually, all of you 
will work very hard to make sure that all this uh, really difficult situation that we are now facing, look, people dying in Somalia is not nice. And uh, I mean, things like that. And uh, I think we should all struggle as much as we can, the best we can to make sure this never happens again. Thank you very much. Sorry, I, I, I took a long time. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Malika? Yeah, just uh, two, two points. One is, I think when we are trying to uh, better the situation, one of the approach could be re-examining re our own biases. Mm. Um, you know, and being more inclusive. For example, Coptics in Egypt, you know, they, they feel left out. They feel that they're not part of anything. So just, you know, paying attention and making conscious effort. Uh, you know, let's say if you have a neighbor who is a Christian or a Mormon or something, going up to them, making that friendship, extending your hand. That's one point. Second point is um, in the beginning of this lecture, we talked about voodoo. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of, part of spirituality and maybe we can discuss that next time but I would really like to learn more about because I know voodoo and other things uh, like psychic it's big in Africa I have friends from Sudan and they tell me stories uh, what's happening in Sinai and it's just to me it's very interesting if we could explore that and you know hear from from the expert because I know it's part of the uh, of, of many people lives and a lot of people believe in these things Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just a quick, so growing up um, in Benin, in Kotono Benin, um, in a Christian family, you know, we had neighbors who were um, uh, Muslims and also who were practicing voodoo. Um, and when they, when the Muslims had their Ramadan and they break their fast, we'll go eat with them. It was for us, we can't, it's like, we can't wait for them to break their fast so we can go <laughs> eat, you know? <laughs> you know, it right. was just, I, you know, and, the, and then after we moved to Nigeria from Kotonou Benin, I got introduced to a different kind of Islam. I was like, whoa, this is not what I was used to. I was just, we were all like, truly, it was just beautiful. I mean, I grew up in a, in um, an international, I mean, thinking about it, it's like international um, uh, background, you know, and in, you know, multicultural, multi-religious, you know, with voodoo, Christianity, and Islam, everyone was just happy. We all ate together. Also, the voodoos, they also have their own feast. We'll go and enjoy with them. It was just about Mary. Um, so I love what Dr. Everyone, everyone is saying, what is Dr. E, Dr. Muche, everybody else. I think the common thread here is humanity. At the end of the day, I mean, yes, yes, we want to please God. Yes, we want to do different things. And, but at the end of the day, we want to live a better world and lead better lives for ourselves and for those who come, up, come out after us. It's about us. It's about having the best experience, right? we can have on earth within our, you know, 100 year, 90 year period, right? We want to have the best experience here on earth. That is it, at the end of the day. I think, I think at least, um, and so what better way to do that than to just ensure that everyone that I meet, irrespective of their background, that we can connect, that we connect in a, in a deep, meaningful way, just like what, Malika is saying, you know, now she's a, she wants to learn about other people. Fine. Why don't we just do that? I think we are squandering opportunities, squandering opportunities to, to really make this place our paradise and be, right. and, and, and have heaven here on earth. Right. But, but instead, we want to poke other people and, and tell them how different they are than us and how we are much better. It, de it defeats the, the purpose. So uh, I would say um, Ubuntu. For me, Ubuntu, that is a, a religion, in my opinion, that can tie all religions together. That's a philosophical tie. Ubuntu means I see myself through you. Right. I see myself in you, right? My humanity, I derive from you. I think if we can so all subscribe to that, um, it will be just, it will really be he heaven on earth. That's what I have yes. to say. Anybody else? Any final, final words from Samira, Shine? Anand, before we go. All one humanity in one world community. Ubuntu. Oh, um, I just, I'll, I'll leave on that. Like that was a beautiful thing that 
you all shared, Dr. E, finding the common denominator of it all, because um, it's a lot of confusion. Um, I do look at religion. I believe in religion. I, as Brother Muchi said, I feel like it, we should treat religion as a heartful thing. But at the end of the day, the way it's the way people have been using it has been causing a lot of toxicity and confusion in the world. So I do believe that that's a great what you said. Uh, the common denominator should be the focus on humanity and leaving a positive stamp on the earth. So. Yes, and that focus Actually, on humanity, in my humble opinion, is not to convert people to join your your religion. I mean, I, I think that's also where the issue comes, right? Because right. The Christians, still in mind, is the best. They go to the Muslim, want to convert the Muslim to become Christians. And the Muslim wants to. It's like, what? What the heck is going on? So right. why not just listen to the Muslim, understand where they are from, and then break bread with them, enjoy with them, and do yeah. the same thing with the Christian and don't try to convert people. I think the idea, I think, I think that, that's a big, a big piece of it. The idea of trying to convert people is what I think causes a lot of this, this issue. Yep. Right? When you try to convert people to leave what they believe, to join you, you are making the statement that you are better. Yep. Right? right? Because, I mean, it's not like you are trying to share knowledge about how to make an aircraft or how to... Um, how to innovate the new medicine. If it's that, sure, come teach me. But if it's just about, oh, come on, follow my way to God, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. So, yeah. so when we say Ubuntu and let's bring humanity back into religion, what we are saying is really believe that that person is enough and treat right. them as, as they are. Help them if you need to help them. And that's it. Don't try to confront them. Anyway, Ramira, go ahead. I totally agree with what you said. And I feel like the revolution that I mentioned earlier has to be like a love revolution from the heart. Because I think a lot of the world, people have lost that, that, that heart connection to each other. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like playing outside, like your, fa your friends, um, parents were like your parents. They would feed you. They would... Like there was so much love in the world. And I feel like we've all slowly become desensitized to other people's pain, whether that's because of the media and it's constant negativity and just showing us all the problems of the world. But if we focus on the good within ourselves and within each other, it builds like a, hu a, fam a humanity that is family rather than seeing them as outside of yourself. And I think whether it's Ubuntu, whether it's um, religion, whatever your path is in life, if it's not making you a better person, what is what's the use like right. religion at its core should promote you know compassion respect love tolerance but a lot peace. of these people peace and a lot of these people will take the message and almost internalize it into who they how they think it should be rather than like um just the universality of it all like all religions are the same they say if you do good good will come to you treat your brother with like it's all the same you know how in the bible they say um like love yourself like you love your brother like, love your brother like you love yourself and do for him what you do for yourself islam says the same thing it says your faith is not complete until what you wish for your brother is the same as you wish for yourself and i feel like yeah we just need a love revolution and that comes from healing pete there's a, all these politicians all of these terrorist groups they're, they're they're just in a lot of pain and their pain is spilling out onto other people um so yeah i just yeah, just a, a, re, a reconnection to your heart space, I think is very important, personally. <laughs> Back to you. Go ahead and close us out. All right. Um, thank you guys for uh, um, listening to my ramblings. <laughs> I hope there were uh, some useful tidbits we can take in our lives. Um, again, to me, it's all about personal responsibility. Take care of yourself, people around you. And uh, try to leave this planet better than uh, than when we uh, got here. Mm -hmm. Ashe, Ashe, oh, thank you. Ubuntu. Have a day, everyone. Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs>